Um, so I embarked on my first trip to Israel, Palestine, without knowing a single person there. Um, and I contacted some of the Jewish Israeli leftists who were wielding their bodies against the occupation um, and facing enormous castigation from their own society. And they opened up an entire world to me. So Goliath began. The work on Goliath began soon after Operation Cast Lead and right after Israel elected the most right-wing government in its history. With Benjamin Netanyahu at the helm, pushed by the right by Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman, who favored the transfer of 250,000 Palestinian citizens of Israel, uh, who favored mass ethnic cleansing. Um, what I found inside Israel-Palestine, aside from this incredible group of dissidents, aside from these brave Palestinian farmers in the West Bank who went out every Friday to protest the occupation without arms, um, who were taken off to military prisons at night, put on trial and disappeared for months. Um, what I found was an entire society, Jewish-Israeli society, where the majority of people were determined to finish the job, were weary of the occupation and wanted a, a society without Palestinians. That's why they had elected Netanyahu. That's why they were supporting Lieberman. And that's why every week in the Knesset there was a new racist or anti-democratic law. It's why the Israeli Supreme Court authorized the citizenship and entry law, which prevents Palestinians from inside Israel from marrying or reuniting with family members in the West Bank. Meanwhile, I, an American Jew, solely on the basis of my J-positive blood, could, make, could emigrate to Israel tomorrow and marry anyone I wanted, whether they're a settler in the West Bank or someone from inside Israel proper. That was clear apartheid to me. I saw the Prover plan unfold. A plan out in the open, which was a blueprint for the forced removal of 80,000 indigenous Bedouin who were citizens of the state of Israel. And I visited the, vis the village of al Arakib, an unrecognized Bedouin village, spent the night there, and in the morning watched the village wiped off the map. It was the third time it's been wiped off the map, and since that visit, it has been bulldozed and destroyed 73 times in order to, 73 times in order to build a unnatural forest in the desert and a Jews-only community sponsored by the Jewish National Fund, one of the top 501c3 nonprofits in the United States. I found a matrix of control based on demographic separation and the engineering of a Jewish demographic majority in order to preserve and maintain the state of Israel's ethnic purity embodied in the separation wall 638 kilometers of concrete cutting deep into the West Bank, the walls surrounding the Gaza Strip, a besieged population quarantined from the rest of the world. I found uh, that the separation regime, what um, the Israelis call hafrada, um, clear policy of separating people based on ethnic and religious lines, had had a terrible effect on young people in Jewish society in Israel. Um, while young American Jews are turning against the occupation in droves and developing critical attitudes on the state of Israel, young Jews in Israel are turning more right-wing than ever. And so that every year, the, Israel, the Israeli Democracy Institute, which conducts the most comprehensive and authoritative poll of Jewish-Israeli attitudes, showed a majority of young Jewish-Israelis declaring their refusal to sit in a classroom with an Arab citizen of Israel, refusing to live next door to an Arab. A majority of Israelis supporting the, cons the use of, of violent force in order to remove uh, non-Jewish African refugees from Israeli society. A plurality of Israelis declaring support for in internment camps for Arabs during wartime in Israel. Poll after poll showing rising racist attitudes and militaristic attitudes, a product of an education system which is cultivating young minds to be good soldiers, not good citizens. And an, ultimately, an effect, the effect of growing up tragically in the only active settler colonial state in the world. The, the post-Oslo generation of Israelis is more right-wing than ever, and their attitudes grow more right-wing each year. Um, and those attitudes were carried in to the war that I'm going to describe to you. The most severe iteration of 
this right-wing government and of the separation regime that it's imposed on Palestinians is, of course, the siege of Gaza. Now, what is the Gaza Strip? The Gaza Strip is a small coastal enclave um, that borders Egypt and the state of Israel, which is surrounded by electrified fencing, concrete um, walls, sentry towers, and remote-controlled machine guns by land and an Israeli naval cordon by sea. The population depends entirely on the state of Israel to allow it to receive its basic necessities. Former Israeli government advisor Dov Weissglass said that we will not allow the population of Gaza to starve, we'll simply put it on a diet. Which is why Israeli administrators from the defense ministry literally count the calories through complex mathematical equations uh, that each resident of the Gaza Strip is enabled to receive under the siege regime. The people in Gaza live in the second most densely populated area on Earth. And that's because most of them are refugees. 80% of them are refugees. They previously had land and homes inside what is known as Israel. They are ghettoized permanently because they're not allowed to return to Israel. They can't return to Israel because they will upend the Jewish demographic majority. In other words, they will pollute the ethnic purity of the state. If they were Jews, the walls would come down tomorrow and they would be free to move wherever they wanted. They're there because they're not Jewish. They're there because of Zionism.